everyone. Today we're going to talk about blood. Blood is considered a connective tissue. Males have about 5 to 6 liters of blood, while females have about 4 to 5 liters of blood. If we take some blood out and we place it in a centrifuge machine, the centrifuge machine spins really fast, dividing the blood's components based on their density. So the most dense part of our blood would be at the bottom of the tube. And at the bottom of the tube, we would find our red blood cells, our erythrocytes. Erythro meaning red and site meaning cell. Our red blood cells are known to help us transport our oxygen. The red blood cells make up about 45% of our entire blood volume, and that percentage we refer to it as the hematocrit. Males actually have a higher hematocrit compared to females. Above the erythrocytes, there is this region right here, we refer to it as the buffy coat. Within the buffy coat, we have our leukocytes and our platelets. Leukocytes are our white blood cells. So leuco means white and cyte means a cell. Our white blood cells or leukocytes, they will help us fight off infections. Our platelets are going to help us clot our blood. Now, the buffy coat makes up less than 1% of our total blood volume. The least dense component part of our blood would be at the top of the tube, and that's where we would find our plasma. Plasma is usually yellowish in color, and it makes up about 55% of our entire blood volume. Plasma consists mostly of water, and it also has some ions, some proteins. Now, the buffy coat and the erythrocytes, those consist of living cells. And so we refer to those living cells as our formed elements. The plasma would be considered the non-living part of our blood. This table right here shows the composition of our plasma. So our plasma is mostly made out of water. So water accounts for about 90% of the total plasma volume. We've also got electrolytes in our plasma. Those are sodium ions, potassium ions, etc. There are also proteins in our plasma. The most common protein found in our plasma is a protein known as albumin. Albumin, we can get it actually from eating things like eggs. The white part of the egg contains lots of albumin. Albumin is made by the liver, so you can, uh, your body also produces it. Um, albumin helps, uh, it's a main contributor to maintaining our osmotic pressure, which is basically the pressure that helps keep the water in your bloodstream. The other protein found in our plasma is the globulin protein. There are three types of globulin proteins. Alpha and beta globulin proteins are also made by the liver and those act as uh, shuttles to help transport things like ions and lipids and some vitamins. The gamma globulin protein helps make antibodies. The fibrinogen protein, um, also made by the liver, uh, the fibrinogen protein helps form those fibrin threads, and those fibrin threads help uh, our blood to clot. And usually the fibrinogen protein is only activated once when you are injured. Other things found in our plasma would be nutrients, uh, gases, like oxygen and carbon dioxide. Um, we've also got hormones in our blood plasma. Our red blood cells are shaped like biconcave discs. So they look something like this with thicker 
uh, edges on the side and it's uh, thin, kind of dips inwards in the center of the cell. Our red blood cells are made in our red bone marrow. And the process of making blood cells, whether it's, um, whether it's making red blood cells or white blood cells, that process is known as hematopoiesis. When the red blood cells are made in the bone marrow, they have to go through a process where they become mature. By the time the red blood cells become mature, what happens is they lose all the organelles uh, inside of them, including the nucleus. And so the red blood cells kind of become like hollow sacs, but they're not going to be empty. They're actually going to be filled up with protein. And the most important protein that they will actually have a whole lot of inside of them would be the hemoglobin protein. And that's the protein that would help us with the gas transport, with transporting mostly oxygen. There's also a protein inside of those red blood cells known as the spectrin protein. And that spectrin protein helps the red blood cells change their shape, twist and turn, kind of makes the red blood cells more flexible because the red blood cells have to pass through very narrow uh, passageways like the capillaries. So the spectrin helps them, um, gives them that flexibility uh, that they need. This is a structure of a hemoglobin right here. So this whole entire thing is one hemoglobin protein found inside of a red blood cell. A hemoglobin protein is made up of four globin chains. Two of them are known as the beta globin chains and uh, two chains are known as the alpha globin chains. Those globin chains are basically proteins. So we've got four protein chains in one hemoglobin. And in the center of each globin chain, there's this red disc right here known as the heme disc. And that's why hemoglobin is, uh, we give it that name. Because if you break the word hemoglobin, you have heme, which is basically that red disc, and then globin, which are the four protein chains. Now, in the middle of the heme disc, there is, uh, do you see this uh, atom right here, Fe? Fe is the atom iron. So in the middle of each disc, there is an iron atom. How many of those discs do we have? We've got four discs, one connected to each chain. The reason why those discs are colored red is because they carry a red uh, heme pigment. And that's why actually our red blood cells are colored red due to carrying that uh, red heme pigment. Now, the importance of having those iron atoms, and so we have four of them, right? Because um, there's one iron atom per disc, so we have four iron atoms. Uh, the importance of having those iron atoms is that this is where oxygen is going to bind. So oxygen, to be transported by the hemoglobin protein, has to bind to the iron atom. And so therefore, one hemoglobin protein can carry up to four oxygen atoms. And that's why when you injure yourself and uh, accidentally you taste your blood, your blood tastes metallic because your blood contains iron. Now, uh, how many hemoglobin proteins do we have in one red blood cell? we actually have 250 million hemoglobin proteins in one red blood cell. And so therefore, one red blood cell can carry how many oxygen molecules? 250 million hemoglobin multiplied by four, since each hemoglobin can carry four. And that would mean that one red blood cell can carry 
about a billion oxygen molecules. Amazing. Now, um, another thing about the hemoglobin protein is that it can help transport carbon dioxide. But do you think the carbon dioxide is also going to latch on to the iron? And the answer is no. Otherwise, you would actually have competition between the carbon dioxide and the oxygen. And we don't want to have that competition because obviously we want our oxygen to be able to bind easily to the iron. And so where is the carbon dioxide going to uh, latch on? The carbon dioxide is going to actually latch on to the globin chain. Anemia is a disorder when the oxygen levels in the blood is pretty low. There are so many causes of anemia. One cause of anemia is blood loss. If someone is going to lose a lot of blood, then they are going to lose lots of red blood cells, and so therefore their oxygen levels are going to drop. Hemorrhagic anemia is when someone is losing uh, lots of blood due to, let's say, a stab wound. Chronic hemorrhagic anemia is when someone is losing small amounts of blood over uh, a period of time, let's say, due to having an ulcer. To treat those types of anemia, you would have to treat the main cause whether it's to uh, treat the wound or treat the ulcer and give the patient uh, some blood replacement. Now, another cause of anemia is when someone is not producing enough red blood cells. And one reason someone might not be producing enough red blood cells in their red bone marrow is that they are deficient in iron. Iron is actually needed to make hemoglobin. And remember how we said oxygen binds to iron? And so without um, enough iron, um, that's also going to lead to anemia and the person is not going to have enough oxygen in their blood. To treat this type of anemia, um, either take iron supplements or eat food that's rich in iron, such as uh, spinach. Another cause of anemia could be that the red blood cells are getting destroyed pretty fast. The thing is, uh, the red blood cells, they can last for about 120 days. The reason they can't last longer than 120 days is because when they become mature, all of the organelles inside of them die. So the red blood cells are only going to be able to live for about 120 days. For some individuals, their red blood cells don't even last those 120 days they get destroyed even sooner than that. And so if the red blood cells are destroyed pretty fast, then uh, the oxygen levels in the blood are going to start to drop. One cause of red blood cell destruction is a disorder known as thalassemia, where one of the globin chains within the hemoglobin is either absent or faulty. And when the hemoglobin is not structured properly, that causes the red blood cells to become thin and delicate and they get destroyed pretty fast. And the symptoms for someone having thalassemia could range from mild symptoms to severe symptoms. It just depends on the genetics of the individual having that thalassemia disorder. Another cause of red blood cells dying is having a disorder known as sickle cell anemia. Hemoglobin inside of a red blood cell is a protein. And so to make the hemoglobin protein, we need amino acids. We actually need about 146 amino acids to make that hemoglobin found inside of the red blood cells. Now, when someone has sickle cell anemia, what happens is one of those amino acids um, get 
uh, replaced with another one. So notice how amino acid number six got switched. Now, one change in one of those amino acids and the hemoglobin is not going to function properly and it's not going to be able to hold to uh, as many oxygen molecules as uh, a normal hemoglobin would. And uh, when the hemoglobin is not functioning properly, um, and in this case, it's going to have a spiky uh, look to it, the red blood cell is also going to uh, look like crescents like this, especially when the red blood cells are unloading the oxygen that they are carrying. And so when someone has sickle cell anemia and their red blood cells end up looking like crescents like this, um, first of all, they have a hard time holding on to oxygen molecules. Another thing is that those red blood cells are going to get destroyed pretty fast. They're going to rupture easily. And another thing is that those crescent-shaped red blood cells are going to block the blood vessels. And so sickle cell anemia, it's a pretty painful disorder. Um, to treat it, patients would either get uh, blood transfusions or they would take blood thinners to prevent the clots that they would have in their blood vessels. Um, or sometimes they would take some drugs that would try to dilate their blood vessels. Another type of disorder that we're going to talk about is a disorder known as polycythemia very. Uh, poly meaning many. And so the polycythemia vera disorder, this is when an individual makes way too many red blood cells in their red bone marrow. And it's usually due to having a tumor in the red bone marrow. Now, why is making too many red blood cells um, a bad thing? The red blood cells are the most dense component part of the blood. So making way too many of them is going to make the blood too thick, too viscous. And that's going to slow down the blood flow. 